Hi, welcome to Caternix Corner. My name's Terry, and today I wanted to show you how I built my cabinet incubator uh, using one inch foam board insulation material. Uh, the incubator is a two shelf model that will hold 240 eggs, and mine has been running now for several months and uh, haven't had any issues with it, and I've hatched out hundreds and hundreds of eggs. So, uh, first off, let me go over some of the uh, material and tools you'll need to uh, assemble this thing. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to need a 4x8 sheet of 1 inch foam board insulation. And you can get that at Home Depot for usually less than $20 a sheet. You're also going to need some adhesive. Um, what I use is uh, PL300 foam board insulation adhesive. And that's like less than $4 a tube. And you get by with two tubes. Um, for a temperature controller, I use an Inkbird um, microcomputer temperature controller, and that's available online at Amazon or uh, eBay for less than 20 bucks. I think I spent like $14.95 on mine. Um, also, you're gonna need a couple light sockets, and these are available at uh, Home Depot. You're going to need a bag of standard wire connectors, wire nuts we used to call them, um, a 120 to 12 volt transformer, uh, your regular little wall warp transformer will work just fine, um, two Arctic model F8 computer fans, and uh, you'll need a couple 60 watt incandescent light bulbs, and then a screw gun or uh, a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, tape measure will be handy. Uh, some masking tape to uh, help you hold your foam board insulation together. And some uh, two or two and a half inch drywall screws. Okay, so the first thing I did was take the foam board insulation and ripped it lengthwise uh, down to 18 inch strips. And then I had a little bit left over and that'll be used for the uh, the forced air tunnel on the back of the incubator. Um, so the first thing we want it to assemble will be our sides and our top and our bottom. And the tops and bottom both measure 18 inches wide and 18 inches deep. So you're going to cut two of them and then for your sides you're going to be 18 inches wide and 24 inches tall. So let me go ahead and get this uh, stuff cleared off the table and then I'll show you how I uh, glue up the boards and screw them together. Uh, the only thing with this project is the glue takes 24 hours to uh, cure. So I'll get as much glued up as I can today. We'll let it sit overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish the assembly process. Okay, we're gonna start by assembling the sides and the top and the bottom. Um, what you wanna do is take your bottom, which is an 18 by 18 inch piece, and your sides are an 18 by 24 inch piece, you're going to set the sides on top of the bottom piece. So here's the bottom. You want the top sitting on top of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of glue along both sides of this. Then once I get the glue on, I'll, I'll go ahead and stand it up and uh, screw the pieces together. Now sometimes what I'll do is I'll take the masking tape and I will tape the, uh, the edges just to hold it in place before I glue it, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll stand this up like this, bring one of our sides in, and do it on this side so you can see what I'm doing. I think I'm going to make this one all pink on the outside. My other one had a bunch of writing. So basically it's just line that up with your outside edge, side on top of the bottom. And a lot of times you can just hold it and it'll, it'll tack up pretty quick. 
but I like to run a few uh, drywall screws into it that'll uh, hold it in place and you can take the screws out um, when the project's finished or you can leave them in it doesn't matter I think I'm other one I left them all in so Okay, I'm going to stand it up, and uh, <clears throat> we'll put a little more glue on the tops here, and we'll screw our top on. Uh, where's my pocket gun? Here we go. All right, so the next thing I need to do is cut out the back, and uh, let me run over the table saw. I'll do that real quick, and then we'll come back here and get the back screwed on, and uh, then we'll put it aside and let it uh, cure overnight. Okay, so I got the back of the incubator cut out, and the measurements on that, again, are 18 inches wide by... 25 and three quarter inches tall uh, but before we can fasten this to the incubator we need to cut out the channel or, or the uh, back of the board for the forced air channel that mounts on the back side of the incubator and uh, the measurements on it are three inches up from the bottom and then this is six inches wide and this opening is two inches wide so you've got uh, six inches by two inches, three inches up from the bottom. So let me go ahead and get that cut out. And after we've got that cut out, then we need to uh, install the channel on the back before I glue this to the uh, incubator itself. Um, I'm just going to use a knife to cut out the opening. And usually what I'll do is I'll take a utility knife and scar it. And then I'll take a, like a regular kitchen knife that's a little bit longer and it'll go all the way through the board. Okay, so once you've got the bottom opening of your forced air channel cut out, we can go ahead and cut out the top one. And I've already gone ahead and marked that on the inside of the panel. Um, basically what you wanna do is you wanna measure up three inches from the bottom, mark you a line, and then from the edge, measure in nine inches, mark the line vertically, and then we'll draw the two circles for the opening uh, for the fan. Um, and what I did for the uh, circles was I just used a cup, and that fit pretty good over the opening of the fan, just about perfect. So I just set that on there, drew a circle around it, and same on the other side. Okay, so let me go ahead and get those two cut out, and then we'll be ready to start assembling the forced air chamber itself. Okay, so now that we've got the holes cut out for the uh, fans, we can go ahead and start cutting the material to enclose our forced air chamber. And I'll go cut them out, and I'll come back here, and I'll give you all the measurements and everything you need for that. And then we can uh, get the back mounted on and start working on the interior of the uh, incubator. Okay, so I've got all the pieces cut out for our uh, forced air channel. Um, the back of the channel is going to measure 24 inches tall and 9 inches wide. So you, you need to cut that piece out, and then we've got uh, the two side pieces are 24 inches long by inch and three quarter, and then the bottom piece is seven inches long by inch and three quarters, and then the top piece is going to measure nine inches wide and two and just about three quarters inches uh, tall, top and bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this channel assembled 
We're not gonna we're not gonna fasten it to the back of the of the uh, back piece yet until we get the fans mounted. I've got to run up to Home Depot and get some screws to mount the fans. But we can go ahead and get all this stuff glued up, and uh, that way by the time we're ready to mount it, all the uh, the glue should be good and dry. Okay, so now that we've got the sides and the top and the bottom of our forced air chamber glued together, we can go ahead and mount it to the back of the cabinet. Um, you do not want to mount the back of the forced air chamber on just yet. And when we do, we're not going to glue it on there. We're just going to screw it on. Um, that will allow us access to our fans should they need to be serviced. Okay, so when you mount the, uh, the back of this forced air chamber on, you're going to line the bottom up with the bottom of the cabinet and what I like to do is take a marker and draw lines all the way around so I know where my glue has to go and then I can just pop this off and we'll go ahead and glue it up and get it fastened on there and uh, then we'll come back and start installing the shelving on the inside of the incubator. Okay, so once you've got that attached, it should look something like this. And uh, we can go ahead and stick this piece aside and let that glue dry up real good. And while that's drying, we can uh, go ahead and start installing uh, some of the rails and the shelving inside the uh, cabinet. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out the pieces to build the uh, heating element enclosure. Um, the bottom measures 16 inches wide and six inches front to back. And the face plate is also 16 inches wide and eight and a half inches top to bottom. I also uh, marked and cut out the uh, uh, front plate uh, circles and I also 45 both edges on the top and the bottom and I'll show you why I did that when we go to install it. Um, the first piece we need to install is going to be the bottom and uh, I went ahead and measured down from the top I believe seven inches yes yeah, seven inches down from the top and marked the line inside I also made an X so I know what side of the line this piece goes on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this thing on its side so I can glue this piece in and screw it down from the top. Okay, now that we got that bottom piece in there, we'll go ahead and show you how this face piece goes on. And on the face piece, I go ahead and pop out these, these center pieces. And the way this is going to fit, let's see if you can see this, if I can do it here. It is going to, I'm going to do it from the other side. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. But that's basically the way it's going to go in. And I'll just uh, glue that up because it really doesn't need to be screwed in.
Okay, so th there you can see where I put the masking tape on. That'll just kind of help hold it together uh, so it's not going to slide around or shift while it's uh, setting up. Um, the only other thing I want to do now before we set this piece aside is I want to drill our openings for our uh, light pigtail receptacles, whatever you call them. And they'll basically mount in there. So what I did was I marked my center this way, which is nine inches. And then on center, I think it is, hold on, I'll tell you. Uh, it's two and a half inches from the back uh, to the center line. And then at nine inches, that'll be on center. And these are four inches on center. Yeah. Center to center, these bulbs are four inches apart. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll take these uh, pigtails and from the inside, we'll just slide them through the holes that we just drilled and pull them up snug. Now, what I used on this last time was uh, um, silicone um, caulk, but I don't have any right now, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and use some of this uh, foam board stuff. Basically, what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit and run it around this receptacle not a whole lot just enough to kind of hold it in there and i'll probably try to keep both wires together like both of my common wires facing each other okay let's see if we can get this to where you can see them okay here's the the two outlets and uh, the bulbs are set here the fans will blow across the bulbs and the heat will go out these two holes here and into the uh, area where the eggs are at okay so now that the light receptacles are installed I can go ahead and cut up the pieces that will uh, mount to the sides uh, for the rails that the egg turners and the uh, hatching trays can ride in on. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll come back here. We'll install them, and then I'm probably going to have to take a break for the night and uh, let this stuff all clear up. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll install the back and the door and get all the electrical stuff wired up. Okay, so I've got the uh, rails cut out and uh, ready to install. Um, the top rails measure 18 inches by 2 inches tall. The bottom rails are also 18 inches, but they're 5 inches tall. Um, it doesn't really matter how high this bottom rail is, as long as your eggs sit higher than the opening for the forced air intake at the bottom of the incubator. Okay, this top rail, it sits... Uh, where's my tape measure? The top rail sits 12 inches to the top of this rail from the bottom of the incubator. So when you install it, see if you can see that over there, um, it's good. You're going to measure up from the bottom 12 inches and then the rail will install on the bottom side of your 12 inch mark. That way you'll have enough room between your bottom eggs and your top eggs. You can get the, uh, the um, egg trays in there or the uh, hatching boxes in there. Okay, so let me recap real quick what we've got done so far. Uh, the basic cabinet assembly is done. We have the rails for the uh, egg turners installed or the uh, hatching boxes, whichever you're going to be using it for. We've also got the uh, heating element enclosure uh, assembled and installed. And we have the, the two light bulb receptacles, holes cut out for them and installed. And on the back of the cabinet, we have the forced air um, channel installed along with the intake and exhaust ports on that. So let me go ahead and let this uh, 
set overnight. We'll let the glue dry up good and we'll get a fresh start on it first thing in the morning. Okay, so we let our cabinet sit overnight to allow the um, adhesive some time to dry. And while that was drying, I went ahead and cut out the foam for the door of the incubator. Uh, the foam measures 18 inches wide, 26 inches tall. I also cut some furring strips and mounted it on both sides of the door. Uh, not only will that stiffen the door up a little bit, but it gives you something to mount your uh, hinges and your latching hardware to. Um, I also cut a piece of furring strip and mounted it on the hinge side of the cabinet. I still have one more to mount on the other side for the uh, hardware. I haven't got to that yet. Um, but also, I've decided to use this uh, cabinet as a lockdown incubator only, and which means I'm going to be sliding my hatching trays in and out. So I mounted some furring strips on top of our rails, and that'll just kind of protect that foam a little bit. Okay, so now we can go ahead and mount our air circulation fans to the back of the incubator. Um, I went ahead and wired the two fans together using uh, plastic coated wire. Uh, that way all we've got to do is uh, mount, them, mount the fans to the board using these four holes. Uh, what I'm using to mount the fans with are two and a half inch long number eight machine screws and they fit perfectly through the uh, pre-drilled holes, the pre-drilled mounting holes on the fans. And then what I'll do is I'll just flip that over. Let's see if I can get a shot in there. And I'm gonna put a uh, uh, lock washer and a nut on each one. Now on your fans, you want to make sure that you have them oriented to where they are blowing into the incubator. Um, this is an exhaust port from the uh, forced air chamber. Um, this is the intake port up here and it sucks air in this way and blows it back into the incubator this way. Okay, once you got them mounted, I'm going to go ahead and grab a screwdriver real quick. Just snug them up a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, circulation fans mounted, we can go ahead and mount our back onto the incubator. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lay this box down, make it a little bit easier. And then the fans obviously go inside the incubator. And on your wire, uh, you can either drill a hole through the top of the cabinet. Uh, these wires are pretty flat, so I'm just gonna let them run right through the, uh, where the two boards meet. Uh, let me go ahead and get some uh, caulk on there or some glue on there, and we should be good to go. Okay, so now that we've got the back screwed on, um, we can go ahead and mount our back of our um, forced air chamber on the cover. And basically that's just going to slide in place like that. And uh, that will just be screwed in place. We're not going to glue that down because if you ever need to access your fans to change your fans out or whatever, uh, you need to be able to take this back off. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna lay it face down again, and I'll run a couple screws into that, and uh, then we can uh, hang the door. Okay, so we've got the fans installed, we've got the back on, and we have our forced air chamber enclosed.
Uh, now we go ahead and mount our incubator door. And after that, we'll start working on the electronics. Okay, so before I mounted the door, I decided I wanted to put a viewing window in the front door. So I found a piece of uh, plexiglass that I had uh, left over from the last project I worked on. And I laid it on the door and I traced around the outside of it. Then I measured in about a quarter of an inch and I cut that all the way out. And then I went back to my original line and I cut only halfway through the foam. And then I went in this way and cleaned it all out. So I got it like a little uh, shelf or ledge there for the plexiglass to sit on. So what I'll do is I'll take some uh, uh, clear silicone and I'll just silicone that right in place. And I'll have a nice little viewing window to where I don't have to open up the uh, incubator to check on the eggs, see how the hatch is going. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll get this uh, glued in there and then we'll mount the door and uh, we'll be good to go. We can start working on the electronics. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a little bead of silicone around the inside. I'll set the uh, plexiglass in then I'll run a small bead around the outside of it. Okay, now I'm going to run a just a small bead right here in the corner just to uh, help with appearances, basically. It'll also help hold that plexiglass in. Okay, so there's the, uh, the finished door. We've got a nice little viewing window in there now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, instead of hanging the door now, I'm going to set this aside and let that silicone uh, set up a little bit. Um, but what we can do is we can start working on the, uh, the electronics and uh, get that stuff installed. Okay, the temperature controller that I'm gonna be using for this incubator is an Inkbird ITC-1000F. Um, um, it's relatively inexpensive. You can pick them up on Amazon or eBay for like 15 bucks. Um, they're pretty easy to wire if you have any understanding of electricity and even if you don't uh, you could probably figure it out basically all this does is interrupts the load side of the power turning the uh, lights on and off um, it comes with a uh, temperature sensor probe that what I'll do is I'll drill a hole through the top of the uh, cabinet run it down into the incubator and set it on my top shelf of eggs uh, because heat rises, uh, the top shelf is obviously going to be warmer than the, the lower shelves. But I have noticed uh, in my other incubator, the difference in temperatures between the top and bottom shelves is like a half a degree, maybe three quarters of a degree at the most. Um, I'm going to move over to the other camera and show you the, the back of this and how you wire it up. And uh, then we'll go ahead and get it wired up on the cabinet and uh, turn it on and show you how it works. Okay, so you can see on top of the temperature controller, they put a uh, diagram to help you wire this thing. Uh, pins one and two are your power and your neutral, your load and your neutral. Pins three and four are your uh, sensor probe. And pins five and six are your uh, heating element switch. Pins seven and eight we don't use uh, because that is for a cooling cycle for like a refrigerator. So we're not gonna worry about those two. Okay, the only other thing you're going to need to uh, wire up the temperature controller is a uh, power supply cord. Um, what I use is an old uh, extension cord. I just cut the end of it off and uh, that'll work just fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and start wiring this thing up. Okay, starting from pin number one. That is your power supply to the uh, controller. That's going to go on to your power supply cord on the load side of the cord. Now to determine which wire is the load side or the neutral side, all you have to do is look at your plug. The, the wide spade is your neutral and the narrow spade is your, uh, your load or your hot side. And what I did was I put a piece of white tape 
on the neutral side, so I know that that's neutral. Okay, so we're going to wire number one to our load. And right now I'm just using uh, wire nuts to put everything together. You could get fancy and build a box or get you a, an electrical outlet box and uh, you know wire it up real fancy, but I'm not too concerned with the fancy. Okay, wire number two or pin number two is going to our neutral wire for our power supply cord. It is also going to both neutral wires on the uh, pigtail uh, from the light bulbs. Now, if you're not comfortable wiring up something like this, please try to find somebody that, that knows what they're doing. Um, because one, you could get hurt, and two, you can fry your uh, temperature controller if you don't wire it correctly. Okay, so we've got pins number one and two wired up. Uh, pin number one is going to the hot side of our power supply cord. Pin number two is going to the neutral side of our power supply cord and also to the two white wires coming off of your uh, light receptacles. The, that, those, the white wires is denoting that that is the neutral side. Okay, so what do we have left is uh, pins three and four and those just wire up to your sensor probe. They can go either way so you can't mess them up. And pin five is a jumper wire from pin one to pin five. So just cut you an extra wire, stick it in pin one, run it over to pin five and wire it in there. That leaves pin number six and that is the load side of your switch. And that is gonna go to the two black load wires or hot wires of your light bulbs. Try to keep our wires nice and organized here. Okay, so now that we've got everything wired up, uh, we can go ahead and program our temperature controller. Uh, because we don't have a door on the incubator, I went and stuck the uh, sensor probe inside the enclosure where the two light bulbs are. Uh, let me go ahead and plug this into a power source. Okay, now that we've got the temperature controller plugged in, you can see that the uh, heating element has come on or the light bulbs have turned on. Uh, that's because our sensor probe uh, fell out of the uh, housing and into the bottom of the incubator. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in the, uh, the uh, housing up here. And you should be able to see the temperature start to rise. Okay, yeah, it's climbing up. Um, it'll get up to uh, 99 degrees and then it'll shut off. That's what I have it set at. Uh, let me show you real quick how you uh, program this thing. Uh, basically, you have four buttons on the front of the temperature controller. Upper left is power. Um, below that is S for set. And then your two control buttons up or down. If you press and hold set for three seconds, it'll take you into the programming mold. Uh, T5 is your temperature. So you press set again if you want to set the temperature. I have it set at 99. If you go up, you'll either go to 100 or go down, you go to 98. So you need to set it at 99 and it will actually get to 99.5 um, because of the residual temperature or the residual heat off of the light bulbs. Okay, so we got to 99.1 and it shut off and it should keep climbing because it's so close to light bulbs. Yeah, see it's 95. It's actually going to get up hotter than that because it is so close to them light bulbs. Okay, so we've got the uh, temperature controller wired up and programmed. The only thing left to do is wire up the fans and hang the door. Unfortunately, I can't wire up the fans today uh, because the transformer that I've got for this is only a 5 volt transformer and I need a 12 volt to, uh, to wire the fans. But the fans are pretty simple. Um, basically, you just got a positive and a negative wire. Um, just wire those to a 12 volt source and uh, your fans will be working. Um, you could also put a switch um, on your box somewhere 
and wire it to that switch and then wire the switch to a 12 volt source that way you can turn your fans on and off okay the only thing left to do is to hang our door uh, the silicone on the viewing window dried up nicely um, the only thing you're going to need to do this is a couple shims to place under each side of the door um, to hold it up while you're uh, screwing the hinges in uh, what that does is gives you a little bit of gap at the bottom of the door so that when you open it up it's not going to drag on the tabletop or countertop wherever you've got them sitting so let me go ahead and uh, place our shims in place and uh, get this door hung Okay, so we got the door hung and it seems to be working just fine. I also threw a couple of my uh, hatching boxes inside there so you can get an idea what that looks like. The only other thing I need to do is put a metal tray in the bottom of the incubator. Uh, that's for water to help uh, keep the humidity levels up. And maybe a couple soda bottles full of water because uh, once they get up to temperature, uh, it just helps to stabilize the uh, temperatures inside the incubator a little bit better. Um, as far as the door goes, the only thing I need to do is install a latch to help keep the door closed. And uh, on the cabinet, I need to drill uh, a couple ventilation holes on the sides and maybe a couple on the top. Okay, so that pretty much does it for this build, guys. Um, I appreciate you joining me. I hope you found this useful. And if you do decide to build this and you have any questions or you run into any problems, uh, please post it down below. I try to answer questions on a daily basis. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and you'll get notified of any new and upcoming videos. So guys, I wanna thank you again and good luck with your hatches, good luck with your incubator build, and we'll see you on the next one.